Hi, welcome to our latest episode of Carpool Radioki. We are so lucky today to have author of one of the Guardian's best books of 2019. There we go, Scavengers. Um, and we've got Darren Simpson here today. Yep, hello there, you're right. How you doing, Darren? <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for coming in today. No worries, thank you for having me. And you, you're going to read a bit of what, your book today? Uh, you? Yeah, so this is Scavengers. Um, uh, this is a very grubby, gritty kind of adventure mystery book. Uh, I'm going to read a small bit right from the beginning. Um, it's about this boy here you see on the cover called Landfill. He's kind of a wild, feral boy who's grown up in this walled-off industrial wasteland called Hinterland. And it's full of all rust and decay and stuff, but there's also lots of, um, lots of plants and nettles and uh, creepers and <clears throat> it's very colourful. Nature's taking it back, you know. Oh, it's full of wild animals and he lives there with the animals. It's kind of like a junkyard jungle book. And uh, basically, Landfall lives there. The only other human living with him is a man called Babagoo, who keeps him safe inside Hinterland from outside. Because outside is filled with peril, it's filled with outsiders who are quite dangerous, and Landfall's never seen outside at all. So this is the start of the book, where you're going to get an idea of a couple of the threats that maybe are looming in this novel. Uh, and <clears throat> so, the only characters so far, uh, this is basically Landfill chasing a squirrel called Joyce, who's one of his friends. They kind of play chase a lot around Hinterland. He's got a dog called Vonnegut with him, and he's just basically chasing the squirrel, and that's where we're going to pick up from there. Oh, fantastic, thank you. Okay, here goes. <clears throat> Landfill had soon crossed the narrow strip of trees that split Hinterland's centre, and turned another corner to find Joyce scrabbling up a stout white chimney. The squirrel blinked at the boy, who was now kneeling on mossy concrete. Landfill panted for a moment, wiped his fringe from his eyes and flashed a goofy grin. No more pipes, little squirrel, so come on down. Let's see if you're as wily on the ground. Joyce blinked and brushed his whiskers. The boy's blue eyes sparkled. Gutless twitcher, eh? He cackled and thumped the ground with his palms. Tell you what, come down and I'll give you another running start. That's more than fair. Joyce tilted his head, scuttled groundwards and sped away. Landfill was soon back on his feet and Vonnegut caught up to join him in pursuit. The Alsatian yapped and howled, causing other dogs to peer out from nearby toppled railway carts. Some of them joined the chase, and the boy dropped to all fours to lope among the hounds. They raced along the train tracks that extended from the pale loomer's wide concrete opening, hopping on and off the cables that flanked the rusty rails. Baying with the dogs, the boy ran and ran, following the tracks until he was forced to skid to a stop. He watched helplessly as Joyce scaled the perimeter wall. The wall spanned far to the left and right, and Landfill took a few steps back to take in its height. He saw Joyce at the top, sat carefully between broken bottle teeth. The dogs held off too, backing away from the nettles that smothered the wall, tangled around creepers, scraps of mirror, and jutting shards of glass. Landfill arched his neck and grimaced. He had to shout for his voice to reach the squirrel. OK, game over, Joyce. You shouldn't go up there. It's not safe. Joyce rubbed his tiny paws together. He backed away slightly, towards the other side of the wall. I mean it! Come down! Landfill was pleading now. His eyes roamed the sky. Don't go outside! Please, come down, Joyce. You're safer in here. The squirrel chattered, then was gone. Come back! Landfill cupped his hands around his mouth to yell, but it was no use. The dogs wagged their tails while his gaze moved down the wall. He stood staring for some time, scratching his calf with a long toenail. He crooked a hand and wet his wrist with his tongue, then ran it through his hair. The dog's ears pricked up. Landfill tensed. He could hear it too. A distant rumble. The eye! It's the eye! He whirled around, searching for the nearest place to hide. There were shrubs and bushes, some scraps of corrugated iron, rubble and plasterboard. But nothing provided enough cover. His eyes followed the train tracks to the pale loomer's opening, then zoomed back to a railway cart toppled midway between the loomer and the wall. Landfill ran for it. Behind him, the dogs barked at blue sky. The rumbling became louder, and he knew this would be close. He could hear the other animals adding to the commotion, only to have their growls, hisses and howls swallowed by the drone. It was a long stretch to run, nearly a quarter of Hinterland's breadth. Landfill's heart was pounding as he realised how heavy his legs were. He should never have tied himself out so far from cover. The noise from above became louder and louder. He could almost feel it bearing down upon him when he sprang headfirst into the cart. He covered his ears, tucked in his legs and pushed his body as far into the cart's shelter as he could. The boy's panting was amplified by his hands over his ears, but he could still hear the roaring from the sky. It screamed directly above. 
and he noticed flecks of paint vibrating along the cart's inner lining. He could see some dogs from another cart, all snarls and teeth and frothing gums, barking skywards while the shadow passed. The noise faded and the dogs settled down. After listening out carefully, Landfall crawled along the cart's interior and peeked up over its rim. The sky seemed to be clear. Exhaling loudly, he climbed slowly out and kneeled to stroke the dogs that gathered around him. It's gone. We're okay. He cocked his head suddenly, struck by thought. Where's Wolf? Haven't seen her around. The dogs trailed him to Wolf's fallen cart. He stooped to look inside, and when his eyes adjusted, he saw the husky on her side on a musty blanket, eyes closed and ribs barely moving. Wolf? You're right. You don't look too hunkadory. He moved in to stroke the grey fur on her neck, but recoiled when he saw her bulging stomach. With a hand clamped firmly over his nostrils and mouth, Landfall backed away and turned slowly to the other dogs. Wolf's got the swelling. Keep your distance. Don't breathe it in. I'll tell Babagoo. He got up to go, but couldn't help pausing to scan the perimeter wall's north side. Finding no sign of Joyce, he scowled, kicked a crumbling bolt and walked away. Okay, so that's the end of that chapter. So if you're interested in finding out what Hunger's Eye is or what the swelling is or who Babagoo is, well, check it out, Scavengers. Thanks very much. Brilliant. Thank you so much for that. That was amazing. <laughs> and I know lots of you will be reading on there. Um, thank you all for, for, for cho joining in this time and we'll see you next time on Carpool Radioki. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Bye.